Hello there, this is Yana Smakula and welcome to another Hero Arts video tutorial. You're watching Color Layering series and in this episode we're taking a closer look at the Mountain Lion set. I have several cards to share as always and of course a few different color combos to explore. If you're new to the color layering video series, these videos are all about exploring different ink pad and embossing powder color options for the Hero Arts color layering sets and there's a lot of sets to choose from. I'm going to start by sharing a couple of the color options for this CM set and will later show you how I use these images to create a few handmade cards. Hero Arts always has recommended ink color combinations for all of their color layering CM sets and this is a great starting point. The color combos they recommend are true and tested colors and they work fabulously and I usually go from there when I pick my own color combinations. Today I'm going to try a few other colors from my stash and you'll see me also make some changes to my stamped images along the way. I'm starting by stamping the outline layer using my darkest color and today this is Cup of Joe. I'm stamping multiples here to make sure I have enough images and so that I don't need to go back and stamp more as I'm working on my cards. I'm also using my stamping tool here to make things go a bit faster, but these images can be just as easily stamped using a clear block and you'll see me do that in just a minute. So please don't feel like you need to own a stamping tool to be able to use the color layering sets. Next, I'm going to stamp the detail layer and I'm going to use two ink colors, pumpkin pie, and I'm stamping this onto two of my line outlines and also using caramel ink for the other two line outline images. These colors are similar, but there are slight differences to them. One is a bit more vibrant and a bit more darker than the other. For the solid line layer, I picked four different colors and I'm starting with a soft vanilla, but as soon as I stamp it, I realize that it's way too light and I change it to the Barter Bar ink, which is more vibrant and I feel it works better for this particular line. For the next image, I'm using soft brown color and this one gives me a nice natural looking color of fur. I'm double stamping this to get a more saturated ink color on my paper. Next, I'm using soft apricot color. It's an unexpected color choice, but it works really well for this stamp set and also gives you a natural looking color fur on the line. Finally, for the last image, I'm using brown ombre ink pad. I love using my ombre ink pads for my color layering images, and I'm just making sure that when I ink up the stamp, the lightest color in the ombre ink pad is at the top of my image and the darkest is at the bottom. Once the ink dries on this particular image, the lines will be more blurred, especially on the bottom part of the line as we did use the same brown ink to stamp the image outline and that solid layer. There is a coordinating die available for the line, so I went ahead and cut all of my lines out. Here's a look at all of them, all different, yet still looking fairly real and true to life. Let's move on to the card making part of this video. I have three cards ideas to share. I love to stamp background patterns using my individual images rather than background stamps. I do love to use those, but sometimes I just wanna play. So today I decided I'd use the line image to stamp a line pattern for my card. I went with a cup of joe and caramel ink color combination for this pattern. So I used the Cup of Joe for the outline and also the detail layers, and then I stamped the solid layer in caramel ink. I never get tired of the beauty of color layering stamps, and I'm still very, very much fascinated by them. Here I'm using just one image, yet I have a lot of detail on this simple stamped pattern. To create a sentiment for this card, I white heat embossed Live Fearless onto black paper, and I used Hero Arts Detail White Embossing Powder. I trimmed my panel with the pattern down slightly. I cut about one eighth of an inch off and I adhered it onto an A2 white top folding card base. I also wanted to add dimension to this card. So I used a coordinating die and I die cut a line out of this sticky foam adhesive. Now this is a specialty, it's specialty adhesive from Scrabble Adhesives. It's thin, so it will not create too much bulk on your card. It already comes with adhesive on both sides and it is die cuttable. So I often use it when I want to pop something up on my card, but at the same time, I don't want to have too much dimension. It's super sticky by the way, so you have to be careful when using it as once it adheres onto something, you can't reposition it. 
You can also use regular foam adhesive squares or thin foam adhesive squares to foam mount the line if you don't have these adhesive sheets. Or you can totally skip this, it's up to you. I foam mounted the sentiment on top of my line and I used the same thin adhesive to avoid having too much bulk on my card and I embellished my card using champagne mix sequence. For my card number two, I wanted to use the You Can Conquer the Mountains sentiment from this stamp set, so I knew I needed to stamp the mountains for my card. There is one mountain image in the Mountain Lion stamp set, so I stamped it using wet cement ink. I also wanted to add some woods to the mountains, so I looked through my stash and I came across this stamp set. This is the Road Trip stamp set. It's an older set from Hero Arts, and I carefully stamped the tree line in Forever Green ink overlapping the mountains. I stamped this several times, and then I used my scissors to cut each image out because I wanted to have more than one mountain on my card. I wanted to have a mountain cluster there just so it would make a bigger impact. There isn't a coordinating die for the mountain image, but it is a very easy image to cut out, so you can easily use your scissors to do that. One of the panels with the mountains I cut out so that it covered the rest of the card, and thus it covered the uneven cut edges from the other mountain pieces. You can see it here on the screen. I also decided to stamp some additional tree lines. I just wanted to have more trees on my card. So I went ahead and did that. And again, I stamped those using the Forever Green ink from Hero Arts. I was debating adding an ink blended sky to my project, but I ended up blending a faint blue sky using my ink blending tool and the soft sky ink. I think that that ended up looking a lot better with all the mountains and the forests. I used double-sided tape and adhered all of my mountains in place. I did not add any dimension here, although you could if you wanted to. Just use foam adhesive to pop some of the mountain layers up. I did use the same thin adhesive foam to pop my line up, and I added some shading using my Copic markers under the line as it kind of felt like the line was floating in the air. There are plant images in the Mountain Lion stamp set, and you can use those, you can stamp those on your card to ground the line. I trimmed this panel down slightly and I adhered it onto an A2 white side folding card. I also embellished it using the same champagne mix sequence. For my last project for today, I used a background I made some time ago using Hero Arts long leaves stencil and copper embossing powder. I also used the same copper embossing powder to heat emboss the outline of my line and make him a better fit for this card. I went with a keep your head up sentiment and once again I embellished my card using sequins from the champagne mix. So here is a quick look at all of the mountain line cards I have for you today. I hope this video has given you some fun ideas to try with your color layering mountain line set from Hero Arts. Be sure to stop by next month for the next episode. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in a the comment section or on YouTube or on the Hero Arts blog. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.